Welcome back, Shalliners. Well, today we're going to break down Lana Del Rey's very divisive Instagram statement calling out other artists, calling out what she believes is unfair treatment compared to them, talking about feminism, and most importantly, we're going to break down what we can learn from this, namely how to be confident and how to build yourself up without tearing other people down, how to create that authentic confidence that isn't based on comparison. Because confidence that is based on comparison is not confident at all. We are going to talk all about it. But first, just want to let you know that if you have a love question of your own or a dating or a confidence friendship question, anything like that, find me on my website, shallonlester.com. Also click like and subscribe. We're doing a ton of videos. Well, always. <laughs> I was going to say during quarantine, but like always. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about Ashley Benson and Cara Delevingne. The day after that, we're going to talk about Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly. And yes, I'm going to break down Mary Kate Olsen's divorce and talk about what to do when you go through a bad breakup or your partner ex is just hitting the fan in terms of how he's treating you when this relationship is ending and how to deal and come through it unscathed with your dignity intact. Also, if you have a video shout out you would like me to do for a birthday, a pep talk, or just get a question answered that way, find me on Cameo at ShallonXO. So, Lana, let me start by saying I am a very agnostic Lana Del Rey fan. I, I love like Young and Beautiful. I love that song. Summertime Sadness was a bop. I can't, I can't really tell you much other stuff she's done. And it's like, but when she comes on, I'm like, oh, this is a good song. They're like, it's Lana. I was like, oh, you know, I don't really have an opinion on her either way. So I approached this whole thing very neutrally. And that may be why I'm confused about some of what she's saying, but we'll get there. So let's read this statement. First of all, yeah, I have to do it on my laptop. Look at how high, big I had to blow it up. I have perfect vision, by the way. I had to blow this up to like 250% because she, she posted this thing on the grid. You can't post it on stories like a normal person so we could read it. She posted it in like size two font, gray wobbly text. I'm like, this is, I had a migraine by line three. So she said, question for the culture. Now that Doja Cat, Ariana, Camilla, Cardi B, do not come for Cardi B, Kalani and Nicki Minaj and Beyonce, you didn't need two ands, you just needed another comp, that's fine, have had number ones with songs about being sexy, wearing no clothes, fucking cheating, etc. Can I please go back to singing about being embodied, feeling beautiful by being in love, even if the relationship is not perfect, or dancing for money, or whatever I want, without being crucified or saying that I'm glamorizing abuse? Six question marks. I'm fed up with female writers and alt, oops, sorry. I'm fed up with female writers and alt singers saying that I glamorize abuse when in reality, I'm just a glamorous person. Okay, Elizabeth. Singing about the realities of what we are all now seeing are the are very prevalent, emotionally abusive relationships all over the world. Okay, grammatically, that was all over the place and it's making me crazy, but we're gonna soldier on. With all the topics women are finally allowed to explore, I just wanna say over the last 10 years, I think it's pathetic that my minor lyrical exploration detailing my sometimes submissive or passive roles in my relationships has often made people say I've set women back 100 years. Let me be clear, I'm not not a feminist, but there has to be a place in feminism for women who look and act like me. The kind of woman who says no, but men hear yes. Okay, that's, that's a lot to unpack in just that little sentence, but the kind of woman who are women who are slated mercilessly for being their authentic, delicate selves, the kind of women who get their own stories and voices taken away from them by stronger women or by men who hate women. Okay. I've been honest and optimistic about my challenging, about the challenging relationships I've had. Newsflash, storm emoji, that's just how it is for many women. And that was sadly my experience up until the point that those records were made. So I just wanna say it's been a long 10 years of bullshit reviews up until recently, and I've learned a lot from them, but I also feel it really paved the way for other women to stop putting on a happy face and just to be able to say whatever the hell they wanted to in their music. Unlike my, my experience where I even expressed a note of sadness in my first two records, I was deemed literally hysterical as though it was literally the 1920s. Okay, first, they're just, okay. I, anyway, anyways, anyways is not a word, Lana. That's, you know how I am about grammar. Anyways, none of this has anything to do about much, but 
I'll be detailing some of my feelings in my next two books of poetry, mostly the second one with Simon and Schuster. Yes, I'm still making personal reparations with the proceeds of the books to my choice of Native American Foundation, which I'm very happy about. That's awesome. And I'm sure there will be tinges of what I've been pondering in my new album that comes out September 5th. Thanks for reading. Happy quarantining. This was a wild ride from start to finish. Wild ride. Here's what I have an issue with. She thinks that she has been dogged, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm not trying to like deny her reality, but it's weird to me that she thinks that people had an issue with her singing sad songs. Have you heard of, I don't know, country music? All our songs are sad, bro. They're all fucking sad. And have you also heard of the emo movement? That was literally the point. And true, the emo movement was largely led by guys, but like Pete Wentz, My Chemical Romance, those dudes were, I mean, talk about crucified. They were a punchline forever. And Haley Williams didn't have it particularly easy, you know? Like there were plenty of female singers in that genre who, I don't know, I just think that's weird that she's like, if I express sadness, I'm hysterical. I was like, Tammy Wynette's not hysterical. Carrie Underwood sings about taking a baseball bat to people's cars. Like, I, I don't know, but maybe that is what people have told her. Again, I'm not this like hardcore fan that I've listened to the backlash. I also think it's weird that she said all these reviews, all these reviews until recently. Okay, so people aren't saying that now? It's like she's digging up something from the past. I, the whole thing is just weird to me because it seems to come out of nowhere. Like, I don't understand what precipitated this statement. Is it that she's pissed she's not at the top of the charts? Is she trying to drum up publicity for her album and her poetry thing? Like, some people were like, you know, the fact that she plugged her album and her poetry books, I don't need any, po I don't need poetry from any celebrity. Can we just stop there? We are good on celeb poetry. I'm, I'm okay, I am okay. Um, that it, it felt just like a like a any publicity is good publicity. So I obviously asked you guys what you think, and you told me a ton. But one of my fan accounts, Art of War XO, hi Ashley, you did she did. I'm like talking directly to Ashley. She made some. She put like a call out on Instagram, like, hey, like tell me how you guys feel about this, and I feel like she got a really good distilled cross section of what people were saying. So here was some of it. It makes sense, but I do believe she's been judged so harshly for only writing the accuracy of how she feels. The artists she name-checked haven't said that they got hit and it felt like a kiss. <laughs> so the comparison is kind of weird when it's only her way of expressing herself. <clears throat> Someone else said, oh, hell no, on glamorizing abuse, that's just toxic. Someone said, big yikes, extremes microaggressions, but I'm still gonna listen though. Someone else said, seeking validation from everyone won't fix anything. This sounds like a deeper issue. And Ashley kind of drew that conclusion too. She's like, it just seems like she's mad that like every single person on earth doesn't love her. And I was like, yeah, you know, it's, it's weird that she is taking this sort of victim narrative. I know a lot of you guys suggested the topic of victim narrative, but you all said, but we've all done it like so many times on this channel. We don't need to do it again. And it's like, good. I don't, I don't need to either. It's weird she's taking this victim role. Like, do you think people like Cardi B is without detractors? Like, do you think people don't have a shit ton of horrible things to say to Cardi B? But when they do, it's a word that starts with N, okay? It's not like she's sad and hysterical. That's an H word. We're talking N words for these women who you named. Like, do you think people haven't said bad shit about Ariana Grande? Like, I, it's weird that Lana, who is, she kept saying 10 years in this industry, 10 years in this industry, boo, Beyonce's been around a lot longer, okay? Like, yeah, you've been in this industry, you, girl, you know that these other women haven't exactly had a walk in the park. Cardi was a stripper for God's sakes. You know, Nikki has been through it too, they all have. And I understand, that being said, like I understand what she means, that feminism doesn't, like modern feminism, is all about the strong, loud, what I call like Lizzo feminism, you know, like she is the poster child for like body positivity and shaking your ass and blah, 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 that whole thing. Lana is not a Lizzo. Two L's that aren't the same. And I understand what Lana means that like, if she's not the Lizzo feminist, she's sort of like an anti-feminist. Oh, you're setting women back. Okay, how do you, 
embody that feminism, but still be true to yourself. I posted on my Instagram that I think one aspect of feminism, obviously I am a feminist, I am a very feminine person, but I'm also this emo bitch. This is, this is my shirt, my collection with murder apparel, one of them, it says cash checks, break necks, you can buy it, link in the bio. Um, I like the whole, the reason I wore this is because I wanted to highlight the duality. And we talked about this duality the other day in the video about the cool girl myth, the cool girl. I drink beer and I like anal and I don't have any standards. That's a, a myth that beta males have created to box us in. You know, you can't wear makeup and like camping. I can't get my head around that. My name's Travis. We all know that we embody that kind of duality, you know? And just because the Lizzo's sing about shaking their ass, that doesn't mean they don't, they're not delicate women too. They have just chosen an aspect to amplify that's profitable. It's called show business, Lana. It's a business. You guys see me here on this channel and I am like very, very real with you, but this, what you see is not all of me. And it's not meant to be all of me. It's meant to be an aspect that I amplify because it's an aspect that is going to give you the most bang for your buck in terms of personal growth. And who who can possibly showcase their entire personality in a 30 minute video? That's like kind of crazy. And who can showcase their entire personality in a two minute song, Lana? So I think it's like, I get what she's saying, that feminism in general doesn't have a place for the delicate women, the women who do want to call their boyfriend daddy. <laughs> I don't know. Is that weird? Would you call your boyfriend daddy? <laughs> I just, I'm so curious. Some people are very, very polarized, very polarized. So I'm, I'm curious. But like, just because you do that doesn't mean you're not a feminist. So what I said on my Instagram was, for me, I believe that one aspect of feminism, because there's a lot of layers, you know, there's the there's the political aspect, there's, there's a ton. But just in terms of our own selves, what we can control, I believe feminism is doing what is authentic to you, but coming from a healthy place. If it's authentic for you to sleep with three guys in a week, because you got out of a long-term relationship, you are shaking the dust off, you want to experience some new eggplant, you just want to get out there and really Test the waters in terms of your sexuality. Great, do it. If you're sleeping with three guys in a week because you are desperate to find a boyfriend because you can't be alone with your own thoughts, no, that's not healthy. It's the same behavior. You might present it to the outside world using the same rhetoric, but where it's coming from is completely different. And it's not like you're an anti-feminist if you're sleeping around because you're desperate. It's that you're just not healthy, you know? So it's almost like we can't look at what people, what women are doing. We have to look at where it's coming from. And we can't always look at where it's coming from because we don't know all 4 billion women in the world. And it's none of our fucking business. It's none of our business. I am sick to goddamn death of the opinionization of the world. I have an opinion and I don't know you and I don't like your music, so I'm gonna tell you to fuck out, you're fucking canceled. Maybe you could just not listen to their music. Maybe you could just not listen to it and move on with your life. People who don't like this channel, don't watch it. Don't watch it. People forget, people forget that I provide this for free. This is not something anyone pays for. You don't pay for a streaming service. You pay for your laptop. I doubt you bought a laptop just to watch my channel. So when people have a problem here, it's like, what do you think, what do you think these creators, musicians, YouTubers, actors, what do you think they owe you that you have to inject your opinion on them and just be like, Bleh, I don't like it. I don't like the way you live your life. Who, who fucking asked you? Like, but for real. And we have to like realize that, that it's like just because I think a type of way about something doesn't mean the whole world has to hear about it. And so it's, but that makes feminism tough because we see maybe someone, if we're a Lizzo feminist and we see Alana feminist and we're like, ugh, she's setting us back. She's so submissive. First of all, how she lives her life does not affect how you live your life. It doesn't. And, but you could argue the point. It's like, well, if she's validating toxic relationships, she's creating more toxic men out there. I mean, you know, that's that's a point to argue for sure, for sure. You know, if she's just like, I just want daddy to take care of everything. She's probably not out voting. 
She's not out marching for the Native Americans or the women of color, you know, whatever it might be. So that's why we keep butting up against it. But there has to be some sort of tipping point or shift that's occurring where it's like, but is her delicateness a cloak for inaction and not helping the movement? For some people, yeah. For some people, yep, that's exactly what it is. But for others, not really. And you know what sucks? It's like no one's required to help the movement. It's not compulsory. And that sucks. You can't, I mean, you wish it was. I'm sure if you're a woman of color and you're out there being politically active and voting and you see your neighbors or your friends being like, mm, bleh, I don't care. I'm sure it makes you insane. But that is their right and that is their freedom and it sucks. It sucks. But I'm sure people look at us. Why, why aren't you doing more for the blah, blah, blah? And I'm like, I don't, what? I don't know. Because I'm doing something for something else. It's tough. It's tough. So Lon has faced quite a bit of backlash for this, quite a bit of backlash, and she did not go gentle into that good night. Did not, nope, not at all. Let's read, <laughs> just, ye. Okay, so the big backlash was like, why did you only pick women of color? Because <clears throat> I thought that too, I was like, oh yeah, all these women are, I mean, Ariana is a woman of tan. I wouldn't say she, she's, she's a woman of like actual color. I don't, I don't consider her like a, I don't know. Is she? Do you guys consider Ariana a woman of color? She's Italian. I'm Italian. Come on. So yeah, the big backlash was like, why did she, um, why did she only pick women of color? Like, yeah, I was like, why didn't she include like Taylor Swift? I was like, well, Taylor Swift isn't known for like songs about fucking and you know, all this stuff. Like she, I feel like she has, she went for the Lizzo feminists, which I'm actually surprised she didn't mention Lizzo. Isn't that weird? And maybe the subtext there is she thinks that only women of color do sing about these raunchy things. You know, I, I don't, I don't know. So she did not appreciate comments of racism. She said, I fucking love these singers and I know them. Hashtag that, I don't know why you hashtag that, is why I mentioned them. I would also like to have some of the same freedom of expression without judgment of hysteria. There you go. Uh, then she said, bro. Lana, okay, let's just let's stop there. Lana, you don't, you can't say I'm a glamorous, I'm a glamorous woman, and then say bruh, bruh. It, would Dita Von Teese, the actually most glamorous woman in the world, would she? Bruh. This is sad to make it about a woman of color issue when I'm talking about my favorite singers. I could have literally said anyone, but I picked my favorite fucking people. And this is the problem with society today. Not everything is about what you want it to be. It's exactly the point of my post. There are certain women that culture doesn't want to have a voice. It may not have to do with race. I don't know what it has to do with. I don't care anymore, but don't ever, 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 bro, call me racist because that is bullshit. I think she's right. Like, just... <laughs> Not everything is about what you want it to be. Like so many times, like celebrities will post them. It's like, that's racist. And it's like, oh my gosh. Okay. Sometimes it is. And sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's just triggery, woke cancel culture that quite honestly, it's, it's starting to have a reverse effect. What it's starting to do is make everyone on eggshells. Oh, I'm just, ooh, I can't say anything. And how does that actually help the movement? That puts, it's like, all right, it's me versus you. It's us versus them. It's this color versus that color. This political party versus that one. That's what you wanted, right? I'm gonna stay with my people where I can say whatever I want because I'm apparently not allowed to say anything. You know, like that is how things, that is how things become more divisive, not more unified. You start chirping at people on the internet. Do you think someone writes back like, oh, I really want to hear your point now that you've called me a racist whore whose mom should have had an abortion. No, I really, I'm really interested. No, dude, that doesn't really help. That doesn't help. So it just creates a lack of conversation, which I think is really detrimental. Oh, and she, she goes on. By the way, singers I mentioned are my favorite singers. She keeps saying that, she keeps saying that. So if you wanna to try to make a bone to pick out of that like you always do, be my guest. It doesn't change the fact that I haven't had the same opportunity to express what I wanted to express without being completely decimated. And if you wanna say that that has something to do with race, that's your opinion, but that's not what I was saying. I don't think it's super appropriate for a glamorous, pretty rich white girl to say I don't have the same opportunities 
as a stripper who grew up in the Bronx. That just kind of strikes me as not ultra accurate. Lana, you can write and sing songs about whatever you want, but like any art, whether it's a painting, a book, a YouTube video, not everyone is going to like it. And that goes back to what Ashley, my Art of War XO girl said. She's like, it feels like she wants every single person to like her and she's furious that not everyone does. That she isn't at like a 100% saturation rate of approval. And it's like, that does kind of seem right. Like you can, you can put out a record of anything you want. Your hardcore fans, first of all, are still gonna buy it. And just because Pitchfork or whatever media doesn't like it, who cares? I mean, of course you care because it's something you put your heart and soul into it. I care when people don't like what I say. Everyone cares. It's human nature, right? But if you, but don't, don't say that you don't have the opportunity to do it. You do. You do have the opportunity to do it. I wish you would have said like, I would love to put out an album that's more authentic, but I get so wounded by these negative reviews. I don't know. Maybe that is what she's saying and maybe I'm just being nitpicky, but she added, she's not done. And my last and final note on everything, I love what I would say, and my last word after like seven billion words before, okay. When I said people who look like me, I meant people who don't look strong or necessarily smart or like they're in control. It's about advocating for a more delicate personality, not for white woman, white woman. Thanks for the Karen comments though, very helpful. And then she used the hashtag fuck off. Okay, so she seems upset. I, I didn't read women who look like me as a race, racial thing, but I'm not a woman of color, so I can, uh, you know, there's things that I don't pick up on that obviously other people do based on their experiences. Um, yeah, no, I, I got, I was picking up what she was putting down, but like I said, I just feel like it's a um, little victim narrative -y. but I don't disagree with her views on feminism that, like I said, she feels like feminism has kind of left her behind and there's no place for her in, in the movement. I just wish, yeah, like she hadn't name checked all of these other people. It's like, mm, I don't know, man. So let's get to the part where we get some help here. How do we feel confident and express ourselves without tearing other people down, without doing what Lana did and call out other women because then, all this has done is shifted the focus of what she was trying to say to this like racial thing, you know? And it's like, ah, so it was almost like this was fruitless because her point is getting lost in the racist whatever. And had she not said that, I think it really could have been a very interesting dialogue about feminism and what to do. Anyway, so first of all, and before we can become confident and figure out how to create that confidence, we have to define confidence because one thing you guys said when I asked you, you know, possible video topics, and you brought up the feminist thing, it's like, you know, if you're not a loud alpha female, how do you feel confident? What if you're quiet and a beta? And I was like, ooh, the word loud is tripping me up because I have always said confidence is quiet. Confidence is quiet. Julia Louis-Dreyfus, love her is such an alpha female to me. She is so badass, she is so smart, she is so educated, and she stands up for other people, but she is a chill woman. Like she's not, she's not the Lizzo feminist, right? And there's so many women. Michelle Obama is so low key, but you would never say that she's a beta, not ever. And there, it's not, the world is not alphas and betas, not for men either. There's plenty of people who are just people. Beta males are very specific type. They're, they're flaccid and weak chinned and they have to tear down other people, right? An alpha wants to build up other people. Alphas are not only pack leaders, they're pack builders. And same with women too. Like just because you don't feel like, you're not like me, you're not like Lizzo, you know, you're not this like alpha, you're not a beta. You're just, a, you're a person, you know, and that's okay. I, and I don't mean it's like you're just a person. No, like you're a normal, you're a normal person. And that's, you don't, don't think because you're not, the pack leader that you're just this like sheep-like follower. You're not at all. So confidence, like I said, is quiet. Confidence is quiet. Someone said, or I read it, or it's probably a very old saying, confidence isn't, I know they're gonna like me. Confidence is, I'm fine if they don't. That's confidence. Because the subtext, the other half of that, it's fine if they don't, is because I like me. I like me, it's fine. Oh, you don't like me? Oh, that's crazy. I like me. And guess who has to live 
with me all the time. Me, I do. I don't have to deal with your bullshit opinions at this party, on the internet, around your mom, whatever. I don't have to, I only maybe have to deal with that a few minutes. I have to deal with me inside this emotional real estate 24 seven. So I'd rather like me than have your bitch ass likes me. That's, isn't that crazy? So how do we get there without tearing people down? Like I said at the beginning, oh, I'm sorry, my back hurts. Oh, I've been moving. I'm packing up my apartment to move and it is labor, labor. I hate it. Like I said at the beginning, like I said at the beginning, Comparison-based confidence is not confidence at all, it's gamesmanship. If you go into a room, go into a party, and you're like, ha, I'm the thinnest one here, I win. I'm gonna move through this party with confidence and dynamism, and I'm gonna talk to everyone because all of you are ugly, I can see your mustache from over here. That's not actual confidence, because if you walked into that same room and it was full of Bella Hadids and Gigi Hadids, any Hadid, really, Yolanda, you would not have had that same emotional output. You'd been like, oh, well, fine, sluts. Like you would not have dealt well with that. Again, confidence is being in your own impenetrable cocoon of truth about who you are. The warm-blooded versus the cold-blooded. And we've talked a lot about warm-blooded versus cold-blooded. It's sort of our motto here, right? Just like we are animals and a cold-blooded animal like a snake needs its environment to keep it alive. It's that comparison-based confidence. Okay, I'm, I'm the biggest dog here, whatever. A warm-blooded animal generates it from within, just like heat. It's the same with emotion, it's the same with confidence. I don't care if you don't like me, I like me. So how do we get to the place of I like me? How do we get unentangled from that comparison-based confidence where I can't sit next to Kate Hudson at a PR dinner without you know, like scrutinizing her body. Oh, look, I saw a wrinkle, I saw a wrinkle right there on her. Gross, I'm better, I'm better, <laughs> I'm better. How do we do that? How do we sit next to Kate Hudson or whoever the popular girls in your high school or the big boss at the meeting and just be like, she is beautiful, smart, talented, accomplished. She can do the splits, whatever it is. But I also have gifts. One phrase I go back to, and it was a phrase my good friend Julie Alexandria told me. She runs a great podcast called Do Tell Mama about like, postpartum stuff and like mom life. She was a, you know, a city, big city it girl and now she lives in San Diego and that's been an adjustment for her, you know, for sure. And she's the best, she's magical. And when I was, you know, thinking about getting into this YouTube thing, like for real, I was very nervous because I was like, there's so many other people and uh, And she's like, there's enough seats at the table for everybody. There's enough seats at the table for everyone. That's all right. Someone else being successful doesn't mean you can't be. It's not a pie that you're all sharing. It's many individual pies. And that's why, that has like been my motto, there's enough seats at the table. And because I have a touch of a jealous bone, I am prone to comparison, aren't we all? I don't watch any other YouTubers. I am, I am output, I'm output, output, output. Because if I do, I start to get jealous. I start to second guess myself. Well, I mean, their intro music sounds maybe different. Should I, their graphics don't look, I don't have a lot of data about my competition. I don't want to. I want to do things my way that are so, so, so organic and so in my lane. And I really think the success of this channel is because you guys have responded to that authenticity. You know, I'm not chasing trends. I mean, we talk about what's trending, but it's like, you know, these videos are very low pro. I'm not like a tech person and I, you know, I just kind of do things my way and that helps me create my own confidence and not always compare myself because it's a really slippery slope, you know? Like you start and then three hours later you're down this wormhole and you're just like rocking back and forth in your bed. Like I've never, how could I ever write a book? How could I ever start a clothing brand? How could I ever go to law school? You gotta stop that. And the way we cannot be that comparison based is to have a full life. We gotta have a full rest of our life. The reason I focus on output, output, output is because this isn't all that I do. I have clothing lines, doing a makeup collection, maybe a jewelry collection. I've got the website, I've got, like I am a multi-armed octopus of a brand. And I have a real life. I travel a lot, I have friends, I date dudes. I used to date dudes before the quarantine. But like that, 
all of those other things, the traveling, the learning, staying fit, learning new languages, trying and failing to play the ukulele, it keeps this running inventory, this running list in my mind of reasons why I have value in this earth. So that if this career evaporated, I would still have worth and value. I volunteer, I help people. I do things that I don't share, you know, because that I'm not doing them for like the clout. It's like I do them to give me that core of confidence. And that is what I bring to this channel. Like I come here as much of a finished product as I can for you guys because I'm doing that work behind the scenes. And that's what is going to keep us out of that comparison-based confidence. It's also gonna keep us from leveling. And I probably should have defined the term leveling earlier, but it's, it's what we do when our ego feels wounded. We walk into that party and oh my God, everyone here's beautiful. Leveling means you either puff yourself up and crow to try to get to the level where they're at or you cut the other people down. And usually it's a combo. It's like, oh, you put out an album, I put out two and mine are better. You know, it's just very childish. It's incredibly, incredibly transparent in a way that's so cringy, so cringy. Like when you hear, I know that you've seen that. It's like the popular girl in high school, like someone will call her a slut or something. It's like, shut up. You, who in the hell are you trying to fool? You are so jealous. You can't handle it. And you know what you should be doing instead? Learning from her. Hey, what does the popular girl have to teach you? Maybe not directly. Maybe you're not going to be best friends with her, but is she... Even something as little as like, look at her posture. Does she glide down the hall confident like she owns the place? Borrow a little bit of that. I've been doing, you know, this New York City life for so long. And I've told you guys, you know, I've been in media circles and I, when I'm out with like intimidating people, they are A-list celebrities. They're not like the popular girl in Gamma Phi. Like they're real heavy hitters and it's real hard to find flaws if I'm even trying to do that leveling. It's like, well, Emily Raddick, how's, she's, ah. Like, no, she's lovely. She's gorgeous and she's lovely and she's smart. And that's just how it is. But not if that means that I'm not. And I learned a long time ago that if I could flip that jealousy, when I feel jealousy, it's a, it's a call to action, right? It's like, oh, I gotta do something. And an immature person makes that something, I'm gonna cut them down, slut. A wise woman does the opposite. Ugh, I'm gonna channel this into growth. And growth is painful. Growth is awkward. Growth means taking a look at things. Okay, Emily is, I'm jealous of her because she's so thin. Like, I, you know, I am, I'm physically so jealous of her. Okay, what can I learn here? She wears clothes that like, that aren't like, I don't know, she doesn't wear like Hervé Leger bandage dresses. She wears like kind of edgy, sometimes masculine, weird things. Maybe, maybe I could try that. If I wanna feel a little bit cooler, like I'm jealous of how like cool she is, maybe I can borrow some of that fashion style so then the next time I go shopping, I pick one outfit that I would think, Shallon wouldn't wear this. I'm gonna branch out a little bit. Okay, now my interaction with Emily isn't an interaction of pain. It's not an interaction of deficiency. It's an interaction of growth. And that is even such a silly little, it's like, I'm gonna pick a different outfit out at Zara, but I still got something out of it. And just saying that to myself gets me out of that emotional, like fight or flight state, where when we feel jealous, when our ego is attacked, we want some way out. Our brain is here to mitigate pain. And if we can give it this tiny little lifeline, something as silly as, you know what, she's wearing yellow and that looks really cute. I'm gonna try on something yellow the next time I go out. Or, you know what, I kind of like how she's not drinking, whatever it might be, whatever it might be. We can give our brain that lifeline and it's like, oh, okay, great. Oh, great, I don't wanna think about, oh, I don't wanna feel like this anymore. One trick I always give you guys when you message me and you say, I can't talk to boys, like I just, I clam up. I'm like, pretend they're gay. This is always my go-to, I was like, here comes gay Dylan, not my crush, my gay, the gay guy who I know, the homosexual man who doesn't want to sleep with me at all and I don't want to sleep with him because your, your mind is in this triage situation and it just wants a way out and if that can calm you down just a little bit, you can move through the experience better, even though it's silly and even though you're not really going to believe this, you know, I'm probably not really going to wear like a mustard yellow men's pantsuit to my next wedding. 
like Emily did, that's okay. It's okay. It just bridges the gap. And then we become adept at doing that. And then we start to develop this toolbox to not have that comparison-based confidence while simultaneously shoring up the rest of our lives. How are your friendships, girl? How's your health? Are you keeping fit? Are you volunteering and helping other people? That is huge. I talk about this all the time. Because if you have worth based on what you're doing to help others, your worth in the boardroom, the bedroom, the classroom, it's now compartmentalized. I don't care that you gave me a D. I don't care that you gave me the D and it wasn't very good. I know that I have value on this earth. I was serving homeless people at the soup kitchen the other day. I was giving my furniture to the people at my church. I was doing something good. I exist in this world beyond your judgments of me. And therefore, I don't need to judge myself against anyone else. I'm generating it from the inside out. So remember, there's plenty of seats at the table. Someone else being beautiful, someone else being successful, doesn't mean that you can't be. And being a musician like Lana, like, you know, there's only so many charts. There's only so many Grammys. Like, yeah, in many ways, it is a direct competition. But we ain't musicians, honey. Like, we don't have to labor under that, and that sucks. But even for Lana, it's like, but she has her fans. And her fan group is always going to be her fan group. And I think it's a pretty tall order to ask for her fan group to be exactly the same and or annex in Cardi B and Nicki Minaj's fan group. Probably isn't going to happen, just like Lana is not going to have the same fans as Tim McGraw, probably. That's all right. That's why there's different genres. That's why there's different radio stations. That's why you can download any music you want. So while I definitely understand her feelings on feminism for sure, I do think she should let go of the idea that everyone's gotta like her in order for her art to be relevant and appreciated. There's a lot of people who appreciated the messages for her songs. Songs aren't supposed to be, I don't think, like the an exemplar of how you should be living. You know, they shouldn't be aspirational all the time. They should ping something that you're going through and soothe your soul, soothe your soul. And I know a lot of people love Lana because they've experienced the same kind of relationship she had. We can do a whole other video on glamorizing, abu not glamorizing abuse, because not many of us do that, but how to break free of toxic, abusive patterns. That could be a really good one. Let me know if you want that. And let me know what you think about the whole Lana fiasco. If you agree with her, if you think, she had some good points, but it was like kind of misguided. If the grammar and the font size was also making you crazy, I want to know. Click like and subscribe for more new videos. Like I said, tomorrow we're tackling Cara Delevingne and then Megan. I keep wanting to say Megan Kelly and Machine Gun Kelly. Oh, no, that would be a cool combo. <laughs> and uh, some other stuff too. I'll see you later, challengers.